Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So when we're building enterprise applications, we often need the ability to support multiple language versions of our application. That means taking the text strings and not hard coding them in your application, but making them uh, external to your application so that they can be translated. And at runtime, we can supply the correct version of the text based upon the input language of the user that's running the application. Now this seems relatively simple on the surface, but as many of us who have done enterprise development know that this can turn into a lot of work because this means not just translating the UI elements that appear on the screen, but also translating error messages that get returned, being able to translate when you concatenate values together um, in in strings, um, being able to take for take into account that different languages have a different order. You know, some are right to left, and some are left to right. So uh, concatenating your variable into the middle of two different parts of strings don't necessarily work once you start translating them into other languages. Uh, but these are all important aspects of doing enterprise development. Now. Um, uh, for our Node.js or our service uh, environment, uh, we're going to have to deal with some of these things as well. Often in educational materials, we just hard code English uh, and just put it into the string. I've been guilty of this many times. It keeps the exercises simple. But at some point, you need to teach people the proper techniques, which is using, in the Node.js environment, text bundles so that the text can be externally maintainable. And that's exactly what we're going to look at here. Uh, of course, uh, this is not the UI element translation. That would be a, a, a part of SAP UI 5. We'll see that later. And this is not the database level translation. Uh, that's actually uh, done as uh, something within the database as well. Um, maybe we'll take a, take a look at that as well. But let's start by looking at the role that text bundles have to play at the service enablement level, where a lot of our dynamic texts are, are coming out of the service, error messages, and, and things like that, like I described. So let's return to our project, and let's add another route handler so that we can build a little exercise around this. So let's just say use node, let's just call this text bundle. Yep, not plural, single bundle. And then we'll say require routes text bundle. There we are. That's our route handler. And now let's add that file bundle.js there we go and we've prepared a little snippet for this so we're in five eight all right here is our sample code. This is pretty straightforward, but what we want to do here is build a little helper function that will get the locale from the browser. So this is something the web browser does automatically. It, it looks up from your settings, either in the OS or our overridden browser settings, and it takes your locale and it packs it into the header of every request that it makes to the server. And this is something that we can pull out here. So we can take the um, the request object that we're getting from Express in this case, once again, and we're looking for the header named accept-language. Um, and of course, if it's uh, if it's not any good, if it's, if it's empty, um, then that's what the exclamation point here, basically if false, uh, if it has no value, then, then return nothing. But otherwise, what we want to do is we actually have a uh, uh, third-party module here, except language parser. It's going to do some nice work for us because there's different formats that this can come in. You know, it could have the country-specific part, uh, just the main language, 
there are even some little differences between the way that different browsers handle this. Um, so we can let that um, this third party module accept language parser do most of the work for us. And we should get an array back. And what we want to do is the little cal should be uh, the first element in the array and an attribute called code. Um, and what we're doing here is uh, we can also put an underscore in the region on there if, if, we, if we want to. So we'll get to the, the ISO uh, language code underscore and then the region. You know, that's because, you know, like Spanish in coming from Spain, uh, you might want to translate that slightly different than Spanish coming from Mexico. There's some regional differences in the language. So that's why having um, region-specific translations as well might, might be useful. So as I said, this is just a nice little reusable function. Um, and actually, normally, I don't put this into individual applications. I'll put this more like once in the utility um, folder of my application, use it over and over again. Uh, I wanted to put it here in place so we could see it. Now, what we have here is an SAP supplied module, SAP text bundle, to actually help with the processing of these text bundle files. So there's just going to be little um, uh, name, value, uh, files, standard text bundle that's used in, in Java and, and uh, client side JavaScript and things like that. We're going to use the same thing on the server side, but we can um, uh, we can call the um, the uh, the SAP module and we just tell it where to find our text bundle files, which we're going to create here in a second, and what locale, and it's automatically going to load the correct file for us. Like if we have a file for English and another for German and another for Japanese, it's going to load the correct one for us based upon the locale that we pass in, um, you know, and then it's going to have, um, we, we can by key tell it what text to output. So we can say, give me the text for this specific key greeting and we can even pass variables into it and they'll put be put in the correct spot uh, and then we can put it in our in our output okay so that's that's the easy part here um, let's actually come over let's grab some text bundle files that I've already prepared here uh, 18n uh, zip we'll download these text files and then we'll have a look at them so we get them up in our project so we can come here to SRV, and we can just uh, create another folder here to hold these. We're going to call it underscore I18, oops, I18N, and then we will import our content in there that we just downloaded. zip there we are and what we should see here is should have imported three files so we have uh, this messages file and I've kept this really simple I've only put one text string in the file but that's not really normal normally you'd put a bunch of different text strings and and you have them differentiated by keys here the the key is greeting that's what we're looking for here in our uh, code we're saying take whatever has the key greeting and output that and we see that here in the English version, hello, welcome to, and then we've got placeholders for two variables that we're passing in here, host name and type. Um, same thing now in German. The key remains the same in all our files, and then we just translate the text. And then the same thing here in Japanese. And uh, uh, it, I don't have an example of a right-to-left language, but if I did, you know, you could move these variables around. And we're passing them in, you know, this is going to be the first variable, this is going to be the second variable, but I could list them in the code in a different order. I could list, you know, in a right-to-left language, it might make more sense if the one appeared first. That's that's how we can, you know, any variables that you want to pass in here, I would not want to just concatenate this together, take the string that's returned and concatenate it. Assuming the position, it's better to let the, uh, the translated, uh, uh, the translated uh, property uh, text uh, text bundle property actually define the order that they appear in the text. Okay, so let's uh, let's pick up our changes here. So let's just run our 
service to get this new service output. And then we can come over and run our web module. And let's test this. Let's go node text bundle. And because my browser is set to English, that's what we're seeing first here. Hello, welcome to my host name running on Linux. Okay, now I'm going to come here to the web browser and I'm going to go to my settings and I'm going to search for language. Here are my language settings and um, so it's defaulting to English but we can override this. You can add more languages. Probably by default, you only have one language in here. I've already I've done this demo many, many times. I've already added German and Japanese in here. So what I can do is I can just come here and whatever one goes up to the top, German now. And uh, if I just come over here and I refresh the page, now it's giving me the German message. And the same thing here, if I would take Japanese and I would move it to the top, then what we see is the Japanese message. Very nice. Um, so let's change that back. So <laughs> I don't get confused on other things. Let's keep it in English. Of course, if I refresh again, there it is, English. And if I would choose, maybe maybe interesting here, let's, let's choose a, a language that I don't have. And I'll move that to the top. And I refresh, and it defaults back to English uh, if you specify a language that it does not have. Okay, so we have we have fallback language capabilities there as well. All right, so this is a nice way to use tech, text bundles directly within our uh, within our coding here. Um, but uh, we also see the concept of text bundles, the, the same technology can be applied directly in our new core data and services, uh, OData services as well. Uh, sometimes we have properties, uh, attributes, uh, annotations that we want to become part of the UI in our OData service. Not, not the content itself that's coming from the database, but actually the metadata around the, um, the OData service. And those can be specified as text bundles as well. So if we come here and we look at this myservice.cds, what you see here is we're actually already using this. We're saying go to the folder, um, go to the i18n, and, um, and look for a key named PO service. Now, when we ran this initially, and I can come over here and I can run it again real quick. Ah, sorry. I lost my mouse there for a minute. Uh, if, I, if I run my OData service, there we are. <laughs> I go to dollar sign metadata. Right now, because we don't have a uh, a file that matches that, what we're seeing is it's actually outputting the. Uh, let me find it here. It's actually outputting that string i18n greater than sign po service. That isn't really what we wanted to do. What we want is uh, we want to come here to our uh, i18n folder and we want to create another text bundle. So I'll just say file i18n dot properties, and I will come here. And I've already prepared this in our code samples. properties and let's grab all these text descriptions we'll put them in here we'll save this now let's pick up the new file and now let me come over here and refresh the metadata instead of seeing um, Instead of seeing just i18n PO service for the label, what we see here is now it says purchase orders. 
And uh, we'll do more of these later as we start building annotations in our services to build our UI dynamically off of the uh, uh, the metadata of the OData service. Obviously, having these translatable strings is, is uh, even more important when we start generating our UI um, dynamically off of the service. Also, I only gave you English text for these. Of course, we could do just like we did with the messages and have uh, I-T-N underscore D-E and, and I-T-N underscore uh, J-A and, and translate these. I just, uh, for the purposes of this exercise, did not, uh, did not translate them all. You're certainly welcome if, you're, if you want to, even if it's just a few of the items in here, just create another uh, text bundle as we did with the messages and translate those as well. The final thing I want to show you about text bundles actually takes us back to the database level. Um, we can apply the same concept of text bundles via these properties files to other database artifacts uh, for their column descriptions, for instance. Um, in fact, what we want to do here is we can come back to our calculation view. And uh, there's actually a neat little feature here in the for calculation views. You can say modeling generate uh, properties file and it's going to extract uh, all the uh, column descriptions that you maintained inside the calculation view and create a one of these properties files off of it uh, and we can see what we have here it's basically the same format we've got a key and then we've got uh, a text description it does have this special commented block here and this is being used by the hdi deployer to know which object to match this up to. Uh, for instance, here we're, we're targeting a calculation view and we're saying how to get the language out of the name of the file. Um, so for instance, we can have a buyer underscore DE. What I did is I just copied this file. I took the, the keys that we had here and then I just translated the descriptions to German. And now when this deploys into the database, um, what we could see here, if I would, uh, for instance, we go look at the central BIMC, um, this is where all the descriptions are stored for database artifacts. So external reporting tools can do the same sort of query language dependent and, and pull out the, the, the column headers, the long descriptions and things like that. If we would now go look at this for core models buyer, Let's come here to our database and um, go to schema, uh, uh, no, uh, views, uh, yeah. I want to choose my schema, it'll be in SysBI, and then uh, descriptions. See, oh, it's not a view. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't. Well, yeah, BIMC descriptions would be a table. Sorry. BIMC descriptions. And if we would look at this specifically for. Well, and I don't have. To, I was going to narrow the query, but I don't have to narrow the query. You can see the data as it is in here. So the one without a language key is inserted as the default. So English is is our default descriptions that are stored here. But then we can see that we have uh, German descriptions with this additional language key. As I said, a uh, an external reporting tool like a Lumera, a business objects, uh, even a third party tools. They know how to. Uh, the, through the interfaces that they pass through to get the metadata on things like calculation views or tables, um, this uh, this can be parsed and the same sort of language key can be passed into the JDBC connection and it will automatically retrieve the, uh, the correct translated headers here as well. So I know th uh, this was um, not a complete look at text bundles. As I said, we did not actually look at how to translate user interface elements themselves. That's a function, uh, a part of the 
uh, capabilities of SAP UI5, but we'll look at that later once we get to the user interface level. But it's as you've seen here, it's also important to know how to do uh, descriptive translations within the database, the service layer, in your OData services, in your error messages, and, and using the functionality of text bundles. We have a consistent uh, technology for being able to provide those language-specific text all throughout our code.